Oh, wait, we gotta change it. Hello! <laughs> I was acting like the camera was working. No. Oh. <laughs> shoop, shoop. Shoop, shoop. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us for this, the... The 16th episode oh. of Drunk Doctor Who Heroes and Villains. Uh, we forgot to change that before we did it. Which I think is a common theme with us. Pretty common. Yeah. Um, anyway, so... This episode is about J.B. McCrimmon, at least in theory. It's been a whole week and we haven't changed clothes yet. Yeah, no. It was just five minutes ago. <laughs> we went to use a restroom and that was it. <laughs> How many episodes with uh, Jamie? Jamie is actually in almost all of Troughton's episodes. I think he, t he clocks in at 115 or something. Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah, let me double check. Does that include the... Uh, oh! When he makes his reappearances also? No, and I didn't include that in Troughton's numbers. Uh, ah, yeah, because Jamie and Troughton both show up in the five doctors, um, the three doctors, the. Uh, How do you spell Crimmon? Uh, Mick M C C R I M M O N. Uh, they also show up. They show up in the five doctors, the three doctors. They show up in the two doctors. And um, I think there's Is a. Is that played by the original actor for Jamie McCrimmon? Yeah, he's still alive. Wow. Hmm. And if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, there's a brief spot where they show up as mental images of the past during a Fifth Doctor serial, I think. It may be Kay's of Androzani when they're used as a trap. Um, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. It's been a while since I've seen it. But I think it's one of Davison's stuff. So yeah. Sorry guys. The second Doctor has more than 119 episodes. How do you spell Krakatoa? <laughs> Krakatoa! Um, K-R-A... Oh, I already spelled it wrong. <laughs> I spelled so, it really wrong. No, no. Jamie's, um, the second Doctor is in an extra one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So tw eight more episodes. So one twenty-seven, and Jamie uh, should be in like one hundred and twenty-three. I think. I think. Let me just double check. Um, eh, close enough. No, a hundred, like one hundred and twenty-one, because he was not in Power of the Daleks, the which is that six was... episodes at the beginning of something Doctor, and I cannot remember. Which episode he shows up in the Highlanders at first? But I'm gonna assume it's the first one. I think so, right? Yeah, it has I to be. I think so. So he has to be the first. Episode. So the second Doctor has Jamie with him for all except the very first serial. He is the companion with the most episodes. So this should be like 121. Because, like I said, that includes. Yeah. That includes the. Uh, uh, that includes the three doctors, the five doctors, um, the two doctors. <laughs> I'm very confused. One doctor. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> two, two doctors. Well, they do some sort of special every 10 year anniversary. Except they didn't have an official one for the 40th. That's odd. Uh, well, it was during the wilderness years. Mm. It was during the second hiatus. Never mind. Yeah, that's yeah the one. first hiatus they had the 30 year and they did dimensions in time. Yeah. Um, but you it, think someone once again, would have made official. like uh, an animation or something at least. Yeah, but no, they, uh, well, many people were making third party stuff mm -hmm. all during that time. I've got some of it here, like Probe mm. and uh, uh, Damage Rising and all that kind of stuff during all that. Uh, mind game, uh, all that kind of thing. Let's see. <laughs> Alright, okay, so he's the longest serving companion, and he is one of the most popular, especially from the classic stuff. Is he your favorite companion? Oh, it's a hard call. Is that a. Uh, what's your face? Mm. I would have a hard time ranking him. But out uh, of the old stuff, uh, 20th century stuff, it's going to be 
probably Sarah Jane over him just slightly, but then him, it, it depending on my mood that day, it could go either way. Yeah. And uh, in the modern stuff, uh, Captain Jack, um, Donna, Wilf, all fantastic. No. Wilf. <laughs> Wilfred. Stands for Wilfred Moss. Can't wait for the next companion, Milf. Milf. <laughs> you see, that's one of those fun, uh, oh, that'd be perfect. There's a, there's a porn porn in Doctor Who no. called Doctor Whore. Doctor Whore. Yes, and... It, With Milf the Companion. No, there's no Milf the Companion. <laughs> but that should be perfect. That should be put in there. Um, that's for the sequel. They did like three or four episodes of it. Uh, and the weirdest part was... Do you have those on DVD? No. <laughs> the weirdest part was, it was obvious the people who did the parody, the mm -hmm. writers, really knew really about fan. and cared about they Dr. Knew their Who. subject material. Yeah, they knew their subject material. They And I was like, wow. That's fun. It, it, it was actually. The guys didn't look quite the way they were supposed to, to, you know, believe they were the people they were supposed to be. That's but the girls were pretty much spot on. Um, possibly with the use of wigs, but the, the girls were really spot on. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, um, so Jamie McCrimmon from the mid-1700s, uh, Scotland, and jumps in with the doctor and just stays with him for... 120 episodes, you know. Because he's so popular. Well, he was it, good. Wasn't he, like, scheduled to end sooner, but then they, like, renewed his contract? Well... The, like, wasn't there an episode where it's set up to where they were going to leave him behind, but then they didn't? No, there... Okay. He was not supposed to become a companion. He was supposed to stay in Scotland. Oh. At the last minute, he proved... He and Troughton liked each other, and uh, he proved so easy to work with, mm -hmm. they said, let's just throw him in there as a companion, and they added that at the last minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was so popular, he, and he, I guess, so easy to work with that he stayed on all that time. Is that how actors make their big break? A lot of times, yeah. But they kept changing out uh, the girls, you know, they got rid of Ben and Polly. Um, and it's funny, because remember Jamie's first few episodes, um, when they're dealing with the Cybermen mm -hmm. up in space, he, they he's on the moon and they're just like, okay, knock him out for a little bit because we didn't write him into this uh, serial. Mm -hmm. So Ben's doing all the, the, the male heavy lifting and, you know, fighting and stuff. So let's knock Jamie out for a little bit and start writing him into the next few episodes, you know, that episode three and four and stuff. There's very much a, a clash between Jamie and Ben to where they're, they both start off as being like the male companion. Like, they, they don't really match yeah, they, well together. Right. They butt heads very Right, much. but it was obvious they were kind of splitting the lines between them that, mm -hmm. that Ben was supposed to have. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, then they get rid of Ben and Polly, and from then on, there's a few times where it's just briefly the Doctor and Jamie, mm -hmm. um, before like Victoria they very coming quickly, on. Uh, pick up another. Yeah, but they very quickly. It's just they'll the find a girl to fill that spot, mm -hmm. and it goes um, Victoria, and then Zoe. Mm -hmm. and yeah, right after we've been in Polly, that's when we get Victoria, mm -hmm. who we saw leave tonight in Fury from the Deep. The faceless ones. And... Yeah, and then. Um, yeah, and then right after the faceless ones, when they get rid of Ben and Polly, mm -hmm. um, and then right then, then they go to Zoe, and Zoe's there all the way to the end of Ben's run. I mean, not Ben, uh, Jamie's. Jamie's. Yeah. What was your favorite Jamie episode serial? Oh man. Well, the same as Trouton's, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, 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 the which which serial do you think Jamie really shined as a character? Okay, that's a slightly different question. Enemy of the World is still my favorite one he was in. Um, for me, I feel like I have a, a, an unorthodox answer for this because it's kind mm -hmm. of one where he's featured the least. It's I can't remember the name of the serial, but where they're in um, the fantasy land with uh, oh. Gulliver's Travels was the name of that one. 
No, oh, um, the, the book world. With yeah, the something of the the mind robber. The mind robber. The mind robber. So for for a couple of reasons, first, um, who it was Zoe was the companion. And yes, the mind yes. So Zoe. That's when she's on the console, the ship, and, and that Jamie cat yeah. suit. Mm-hmm. No, they walk out of the TARDIS the very first episode of that show. They walk out of the TARDIS. They're in the black uh, suits. Yeah. With like the stark white backgrounds. And then the mind robbers, like, mind-melding them or, like, brainwashing them. Yeah. We had this really cool, um... Picture of Scotland, yeah. There's this really cool moment where they really use the set design and the costume design and really write it into the narrative or the story to where they're, they're, they come out of the TARDIS themselves and, like, cognizant, and then the mind robber is, like invading their minds and they're becoming mind washed and in between like scenes they make this cut to where their wardrobes are now white they're in the white suits on the white background so it's it's kind of like the blank pages on a book and they're losing their sense of self and they're just becoming you know oh yeah washed out into the background as they're losing themselves but also i thought that was a really cool serial for that reason but also it's one of the most memorable serials I have of Jamie because we have that one really weird scene where like Jamie loses his face. Oh, and yeah. Tron's trying to put his face back together. And he gets it wrong. <laughs> he gets it wrong. And he gets a wrong Jamie. And it's a different character playing as Jamie. A different actor playing. Yeah. But the reason they did that was Jamie got sick or something yeah, was, that week, week and off, he couldn't yeah. film. But they had to continue with the production schedule. Mm-hmm. So they replaced him in yeah. their fantasy world with another actor like so, that. So oddly, it's one of the serials that has the least amount of Jamie. <laughs> but it's one of the most memorable uh, Jamie-featured seasons serials for me. Because it, it's just so memorable to where he... It's this kind of creepy, you know, um, odd, dream-like fantasy world where his face is wrong. And they have the really cool set and costume designs. That's my most memorable serial for Jamie. Mostly because of the face thing. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to forget. All right. Well, for me, it's either going to be... I still love Enemy of the World. I love the fact that when he uh, stops the bomb from mm-hmm. going off and he's working his way in with Salamander and he goes deep undercover and he keeps having to do that stuff. He really, really, cool. really shines as a character. He really shines at that point. Yeah, there's so much initiative. He's like, he's just... All right. He's one of the very few um, companions that are so capable that they're just kind of self-governing without the doctor. Like, they just really wrap themselves in the plot and right. find a but, means But he also to listens to the doctor, which yeah. is rare for no, companions. Great for taking. <laughs> yeah. um, but no, uh, that one... Great um, chemistry with Stroud and Oh, yeah, fantastic. Fantastic chemistry. Um, it, it's that one or possibly... Mm. <laughs> oh, um, the Tomb of the Cybermen. Mm. That's a classic. That's a classic, and he's he's pretty good in that one. Um, Man, I like that series. Fighting this is a really great serial. Uh, it's hard not to like that serial. We have the strong man who really remind me of the strong man from from the one they get Victoria. The historically, yeah. I don't know if that's the same actor, but he's very similar. <laughs> He's yeah. just like a, a strong man. Uh, he's he's a mute in like both of them, right? Or he's a mute in one, but he talks in the Cybermen, the two movies. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same actor, but it, it feels like very much the same character. Well, the problem is, is there's um, some of the episodes survive, but some of them are, right. you know, reconstruction and all that. Also, the BBC are, they very much recycle actors. There's only so oh, many yeah. to go around. There's this one guy. Um, it just keeps showing up. Well, yeah, he's uh, the one we watched last time, um, Planet of the Daleks. Mm-hmm. He was the same guy as Gulliver and Gulliver's Travels. That guy he shows was up like three or four, four times. Four times, yeah. He was one of the Time Lords at the end of the War Games. Mm-hmm. He's he's in like four or five different serials as different characters. Who is it? Is it Ben that shows up in the chase where he's the Texan? Yeah, at the top of the Empire State yeah. Building, yeah. And Why then later on, um, no, it's not Ben, it's uh, Peter Purvis. What's the name of the character he plays? Man, we did a whole serial. We did a whole uh, 
Heroes and villains on him. Why can I think of his name at the moment? Steven. 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 Steven's the, yeah, that's right. Steven. It's like they put um, the glasses with the mustache and the nose on them. It's like, this is a different person. <laughs> no, I was having fun. I guess they wanted to get him in for the whole, mm -hmm. you know, the serial or whatever and couldn't quite uh, find a place for him in the beginning. Um, or they were just cheap and only want to pay one guy for two rolls. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Uh, they only played the the roadrunner. They only paid the voice actor for the roadrunner for one meep. <laughs> they doubled it up in the recorded. Time. Really? No, that's a joke from The Simpsons, <laughs> where they beat the voice actor for the roadrunner. Like, they only they only paid me for one meep, and then they doubled it up those cheap bastards. <laughs> oh man! One of my favorite jokes from The Simpsons. I'm watching season 32 right now as it comes out. Hmm. The uh, like I said, I've got a on the Dark Two boards. I've got a a count. The last season, right? No, <laughs> it's been renewed to 34. 34. Yeah, which is the last season, right? I hope not. <laughs> um, I've got a thread going uh, that I update every six or months or twelve months, mm -hmm. where Doctor Who is. Uh, slowly but surely, The Simpsons is catching up to Doctor Who because yeah. Doctor Who's coming out with ten episodes this year, mm -hmm. one episode this year, yeah. ten episodes this year, and The Simpsons is like twenty-two episodes every year. Boom, 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 and it's like pretty soon The Simpsons will catch up and pass up Doctor Who, assuming it's not canceled. You know, I feel like Gunsmoke had out one of those records. Like, yeah, but The Simpsons passed it up in episodes. Yeah. yeah. The G Simpsons has more it's seasons, and for a while, Gunsmoke still held that. And in fact, mm -hmm. at the beginning of uh, the episode where they beat Gunsmoke, mm -hmm. they make a joke about it. Oh, do they? Yeah. <laughs> it's. Yeah, I feel like it's harder with live action things with animated. Well, well, I, I'm sure they both have their okay. struggles. Well, yeah, there, there's pluses and minuses. The animation stuff. I feel like there's more you can, minuses for live. Right. Action. You you can do for longer without having to worry about the characters aging. Mm -hmm. However, on the other hand, especially when you go to older shows, they had so many more episodes a year. You know, like Doctor Who's early seasons were 40 episodes. Yeah. Uh, by the time you get to Tom Baker, you know, in the 70s, mm -hmm. you're looking at 25, 26 episodes. Something um, happened where there's just this status quo of... It's before they invented reruns, that's what happened. <laughs> Well, it's partly because, it's partly for several things. One is, yes, they can show old episodes. Right. Um, but also, it's because they wanted to up the production values. Mm -hmm. And in order to make bigger, you know, Game of Thrones type production values, mm -hmm. you have to make fewer episodes. If you want Doctor Who early production values, you can make it pretty cheap. If you want modern Doctor Who production values, it's going to cost more. I feel like the number of episodes per season is going to continue to fall with the rise of on-demand viewing. Like, eventually, mm. television, as we know, it's going to die as a format to where, like, the time slots and everything's going to be in, in you know, Netflix well, fashion, where it's like... This show released episodes every eight episodes every other year, and you can just watch those well, whenever you want. And it's kind of like Sherlock being the epitome of that. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing: the episodes got longer. Yeah, um, they have with, like feature length. Yeah, like with uh, Doctor Who original minutes. episodes were like 25 minutes. Once uh -huh. you cut out the intro and the exit credits and the the recap, you're looking at like 20 minutes. Yeah. Modern episodes of Doctor Who. 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. Uh, once again, you have to take off about five minutes for that, but it's still, you're getting more content. Yeah. Okay. Like, uh, Sherlock is the ultimate epitome of that, you know? We'll get you three whole episodes uh, every three years, four years, mm -hmm. and but they're an hour and a half, two hours long. Mm -hmm. They are full-on movies, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh... But yeah, no. I still don't understand that. <laughs> well, that like? it's the British thing. I think what's yeah. going to happen is, is you're going to see, uh, you're going to see things split. So you're going to have the big production values, mm -hmm. your Game of Thrones, uh, 
your, you know, Doctor Who or Sherlock or whatever, the, the, the higher end stuff. Featuring episodes. Right, it's going to get shorter and shorter seasons with longer episodes, but it, the, the time's going to, you know, maybe be more or less the same, but they're throwing so much money at it. Mm -hmm. And it's not like early Doctor Who when the Doctor, you know, makes mistakes and they have to get left in because they yeah. can't even edit the flub thing. Flub a line. Yeah, yes. flub a line. It's, you know, everything it's has to be perfect. It has to look on your giant 4K super TV, and that's one of the reasons the production values have gone up, mm -hmm. as gorgeous as it would in a theater, and so everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're gonna keep reshooting stuff until it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the, you know, because I mean, big time actors make a lot of them one movie a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, some of them one every two or three years. Yeah. Uh, but with something like Sherlock or something, you know, like that, or Game of Thrones, mm -hmm. you have to make basically the equivalent of ten movies a year. You know, Sherlock, three movies and during that time. You know, Game of Thrones, which is why on a big, large ensemble cast works better, mm -hmm. is because... Film you, all those characters. Right, all the characters. And one character may only be in, uh, you know, like... 10 to 20 percent of the episodes or in 10 to 20 percent of the scenes mm -hmm. they don't have to be there constantly you know okay. in the old days uh, also it's unionized stuff in the old days i'm on a vacation okay uh or i'm sick okay jamie's sick this week yeah. we'll replace the actor or we'll just write the doctor is sleeping for that entire episode which they even seen them do a couple times right Troughton. He's, he's recovering or he's yeah yeah just recently the the, the daleks episode where he's no no, yeah. no no what am i thinking of yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, exactly kind of the first episode he's in this hibernation he didn't really miss an episode right? yeah that's, that's a bad example but, but. but they well you remember um going back to hartnell mm -hmm. i mean when you've got the massacre of saint bartholomew's eve or uh what was the french revolution one there's one that I made a joke that he was on vacation because it was his doppelganger that was filming. Well, that's the master of St. Bartholomew's It's the Eve. same actor, and, and yeah. I'm like, oh, Hartnell must have been on vacation because they only have the scenes with his doppelganger in this. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, no, there's... Um, but it's a joke because it's the same actor. Let's see. Uh, it was either the, like the Space Museum or the Web Plant. There's one episode in there where it's like, oh, okay, we're just going to focus on everyone else and he's in jail for this episode or right. something like that. Yeah. yeah. Someone's in lockup, someone's been captured, someone's yeah. unconscious. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. really happen anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, they just, it doesn't have to because they just right. write the other people in. Uh, back then it was like, the only way to get a vacation is if, you know, my character's unconscious or something or, you know. Brutal filming schedule, I can only imagine. Well, that's one of the reasons that they've gone to more of the ensemble thing. Mm -hmm. So I think you're going to have, like, movies. Nobody makes $30 million movies anymore. They make $200 million movies or they make $3 million movies. Right. So you got the independent people doing this. you got the big studios doing this. And Terry Gilliam is having a hell of a time finding anyone to support his movies because it's not big enough for the big studio. And it's not small enough for the small independent people who can afford it. Uh, nobody makes $35 million movies anymore. Can we talk about what a great movie Kong vs. Godzilla was? <laughs> we can. All uh, the CGI and but, uh, Blizzard fighting mon monkey. And yeah, but it's, it's the same thing with... <laughs> it's going to be the same thing with TV. You're mm -hmm. going to have the big high-end production stuff that takes forever. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have fewer episodes. Mm -hmm. But then you're going to have people like us doing fun stuff like this and putting out an episode every week. No, not um, people like us. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but, you know... People are better at this than... <laughs> no, yeah, much, much, much better. But they're going to... And there are some people who put out an hour-long episode nearly every day. Yeah. So you're going to have a really high-end production value and, like us, really low-end production value. Mm -hmm. But the numbers, it's going to be very disparate because mm -hmm. there's going to be very few and this is going to be a whole bunch. Right. Um, just sort of like the early, you know, day of Doctor Who versus the modern stuff. Mm -hmm. It's gonna just wide disparity. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So how about that, Jamie? 
<laughs> um, he, he's awesome. The actor voices Troughton in what? Big Finish Audios. Jamie McCrimmon is the actor versus Dr. Troughton? No, no, no. Hey. What? Big Finish is an audio uh-huh. uh, deal. When Doctor Who went on hiatus the first time, mm-hmm. they said, well, let's get the actors and do audios. For, like, radio broadcasts. Well, radio and, and just, just you bought them on cassette or later on CDs and stuff like that. Books on tape. Right. Nowadays, you just get them on a flash drive or, you know, just download it. Uh, or but, a floppy disk is where I get <laughs> audio book content. Um, I, just, I stick it to the fridge with a magnet. But anyway, as he's gotten older, his voice has changed. Mm-hmm. But he knows Troughton so well, or he knew Troughton so well, he can do a perfect impersonation of Troughton. That's such a that's such a love note to just hear it is. Those but actors he doesn't sound again. like himself when he was young. Mm-hmm. So people will listen to the audios uh-huh. of the Second Doctor and go, "Man, whoever's voicing Troughton is perfect, but the guy playing Jamie is <laughs> so the horrible, <laughs> and it's Jamie." <laughs> He yeah. can't do an impression of himself. Yeah, well, my voice is different than what it was 30 years ago. My voice is exactly the same as it was 30 years ago. You were, how old are you? <laughs> Not 30. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's... And he was one of the characters that came back the most, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jamie did. Yeah. The, the one person that came back more was definitely Sarah Jane. Because she even came back in, like, the non-sanctioned stuff. Well, she came back... In Sarah Jane Adventure. She had her own spinoff. Right. She she came back in K9 Company, the mm-hmm. first spinoff. She came back in the main show later on mm-hmm. in the 21st century. Then she had her own spinoff, the Sarah Jane Adventures. Um, and... Then, like, non-canon stuff also, right? Right. She... Well, she was in some of the non-canon stuff, yeah. I believe, but I have not... I haven't watched it all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so you have some catching up to do yourself. Uh, yeah, listen, I are going to finish the 12th Doctor. Well, we're going to finish the 12th Doctor. We're going to get Lissa caught up to the main show. And then she and I are going to go through all the, all the third-party stuff that we haven't watched yet uh, before we start on Whitaker. I want to put off what occurred for as long as possible. <laughs> so you're not... A, yeah, have you watched through all the 12th Doctor stuff? Uh, Capaldi, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen everything except some of the third-party stuff that mm-hmm. Liz and I are going to watch together for the first time. Mm-hmm. Series 12, I've only seen Spyfall Part 1, which we talked about in, in the last episode, and um, I haven't seen the latest New Year's special, the which we'll get to. The 12th season is the 13th Doctor. Uh, series 12. Series 12. Series 12 is the 13th Doctor. Season 12 is the 4th Doctor. Series. Mm. The first. The 12th. The first one of the show was mm-hmm. called Seasons. The second. Yeah, the, the first the revival, revival. Right, was the TV movie. Mm. And then the second revival, which is the one ongoing currently, mm-hmm. is called Series. Which is kind of the same revival, because the first revival was rebooted into the live-action revival. Well, no, the problem was is there was a giant hiatus, and then there was another giant hiatus, and the show was canceled, and then the pilot for the new stuff wasn't picked up, so it was canceled. The pilot was the animated? No, no, no. The, the, the pilot... Chocolate. Okay, the pilot was basically uh, Doctor Who the TV movie. It was supposed to be the pilot for the new show, oh. but it wasn't picked up, so it was basically canceled. So the show's been canceled twice, essentially. Color me confused, I mean, I don't... <laughs> but seasons, TV movie, series. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so you, when, you, when you talk about season 12, it's different from series 12, and the right. current stuff is series 12, and that's one of the things I'm watching. Yes. Right. Anything else about Jane? <laughs> um, no, no. We missed last week because we were seeing Kong versus Godzilla. Great Godzilla movie. versus Kong. Highly recommend it. Okay. It's a fun movie. When they're dealing with the humans, it's really bad. 
when they're dealing with the monsters, it's really good. The special effects I, are fantastic. I like the human like subplot. Obviously, the everything, every scene where Godzilla is not in is just filler because it's a Godzilla movie, and it really sucks when when no. they think that they can focus on the humans like subplot. When all you really went to see the Godzilla movie was to no, see Godzilla it's a King Kong movie. fight. Godzilla movie. No, no, no. It starts with King, with King Kong. He's the protagonist the entire way through the movie. No. And then it ends with King Kong. And it spends most of the time with him. It's a Godzilla he is movie. the protagonist of the movie. Well, Godzilla movie spends, you know, 80%... 70% with the humans, and the humans are the main characters, but the 30% of the movie, which is Godzilla and Godzilla scenes, is what you care about, and it's a Godzilla movie, even though Godzilla is only 30% of the movie. You go you go see a Godzilla Kong movie for Godzilla. It's 50% of the movie. Right, yeah, but that doesn't mean we care about Kong, it's a Godzilla movie. <laughs> Dude, King Kong was a protagonist, he's awesome. Uh, it was. A, you, you might as well say that the humans are the protagonists of the Godzilla movies 1 and 2, but... It's still a Godzilla movie. You go to see it because for not Godzilla. in this one. Nobody cares about the humans. It was like, eh. I thought the humans in this one. There's subplots. There's a lot more humor. I thought the characters were a lot more well well rounded than the other than previous Godzilla movies, to where like the humans are just very much filler. And they try to focus on the humans, and they want you to care about the people. And you don't, and, and you're just <laughs> like, get to Godzilla. <laughs> we want to see it's, the roar. It's like, okay, we see seriously, the laser breath. this guy is super underground, but this this girl, the girl from Stranger Things, can find him in ten minutes or something, you know? Yeah. He's yeah. like, wow. Does he, who comes in here who buys Chinese Tide Pods or whatever the hell he buys, you know? Yeah, yeah Bleach. So, Bleach. Oh, yeah, Bleach. He's a German like, it was like, really? really? The FBI guy, can't but... find this guy, but you can. <laughs> I don't think the FBI were looking for him. He's like very much under the radar. It was like a, it was like a, he, he had a crazy, you know, conspiracy theory podcast, which went under most people's radar. He worked for the big tech company, and then he was ratting on big tech company. Right, the tech but company was probably looking for they him. Were, they weren't looking for him because everyone viewed him as like a weird, crazy conspiracy theory guy and no one really cared about him. Who, and he went out who happened to be working for them. And, <laughs> yeah. and then she was the one person who actually believed him and then she found his podcast. And then she, she it's podcast. so contrived. All the human stuff was so contrived. I liked it. I thought they were funny. I'm going to destroy a computer by pouring alcohol. Like, that was really dumb. Nobody <laughs> ever has a backup system for for anything. You know? I liked it. I thought the dumb stuff with the humans was fun. I thought the monster stuff was awesome. Spoiler alert, the one the one complaint I have, we're, we're gonna talk about spoilers, right? And spoiling, spoiling. Uh, Mega Godzilla shows up. That was awesome. Which was awesome, but I didn't like Mega Godzilla because we have we have, you know. Every other, uh, the past three movies, you know, uh, all three movies with the new Godzilla stuff, you have Godzilla, who more or less looks like Godzilla, you have King Kong, who looks like King Kong, you have mm -hmm. Mothra looking like Mothra, King Ghidorah looks like King Ghidorah, uh, you have Rodan, who looked like Rodan, and then you have Mecha Godzilla, who looks nothing like the original Mecha Godzilla, he looks like some super generic mecha yeah, it was CGI. Really cool. It was cool, just was very unfaithful to the original mecha Godzilla, which was strange because every other character, recurring character, was very faithful to the original design. They're recognizable. And then you have this very generic looking mecha just, Godzilla. Just before the fat kid said mecha Godzilla, I, I was like, mecha Godzilla, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, they, he knew it was mecha Godzilla. Yeah. Doesn't look anything like Mechagodzilla. Totally different design, unfaithful, unrecognizable. You, they set it up to where you know it's Mechagodzilla, but it doesn't look like the original. Yeah. That's my one complaint, is that I don't like the design of Mechagodzilla. Because he doesn't look like Mechagodzilla. Yeah. The fight scenes were awesome. They were great. The CGI was awesome. This is great. The humans were crazy, They're stupid fun. idiots. Um, <laughs> fun. And the whole, everything about the humans was super contrived. I taught this giant ape to speak sign language inside of a dome with a million cameras and nobody else knew he was doing sign language. You know? 
Yeah, that was ridiculous. I didn't even think about that. This yeah. giant Truman Show dome, and we were watching him twenty four seven. Constant surveillance. You speak silently. Not That's only a that, point. yeah. I never even thought about that. Not only that, you're around these people who speak sign language. Mm-hmm. The little girl and and the lady and oh my gosh, I saw them do that. Well, wait, look, the monkey's doing the same thing. <laughs> I just thought that was just nuts. I really, really like the little girl with who um, she, re- she reminds me of my niece. She looks a lot like my niece. Hmm. I like when she calls the other guy a coward. <laughs> and he's like, what does that mean? He's like, oh, it means you're very brave. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, you're a very brave. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. The, the Stranger Things girl. I like, she was in the last movie. Like okay. Godzilla. I saw the one, I saw the Godzilla with uh, Matthew Broderick. I've seen most of That's, the ones. We don't talk yeah, about that yeah. one, that one sucks. Uh, and I, think I, I love th- Matthew Broderick, terrible guy. Not canon. <laughs> no, no, I think I saw like, the first one of this run. But the first see, revival. Right, but I didn't see either of the Kong movies or, or the, I think there was another something in there I didn't see. Um, it's confusing because they released a, a, a modern Kong movie. And then they released a different modern Kong movie, which is like Skull Island with Jack. Well, I saw the one that, um, okay. Jack course, Black's in one of them. I've seen the original King Kong. And, well, Jack Black is in the one that I saw, which was done by Peter Jackson, mm-hmm. who did Lord of the Rings. That yeah. was his project he wanted to do afterwards, and so he did a remake of King Kong. Mm-hmm. But that's the... I don't think that's part of this series. There's, there's, there's a, there's like the original King Kong, and there's a like a remake or two that we can. I'm talking like post two thousands. There's a modern King Kong, and then there's another modern King Kong. Right, and right. There's right. Godzilla versus King Kong. Right, but I think the the first one you're talking about was that Peter Jackson film, and it was done this century. Yes, like oh two or well, three something like or something very like that. Early. Yeah, that's the, the last one I saw, right? Thing. So, so yeah. there was stuff in this, like that mother and her kid, and mm-hmm. I knew nothing about them, but or the Stranger Things girl. Yeah, I think they're but, right. They're in a different one, but I mean, I didn't need to know any of that to see the movie because we don't. You don't care about the humans. Is the yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just I, you're just waiting. Like, oh, cool. Godzilla. Girl's deaf. Great. Okay. The the lady signs to her. Great. Okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. And it worked out great with King Kong. You know. I'm sure they're. they're so, the the girl from Stranger Things was in the last Godzilla movie, or maybe the first one, one of them. And then so we she she comes back, and then um, the deaf girl I think was in the Kong, the, the second yeah, the Skull yeah. Island one, the second uh, modern Kong movie. Yeah, I just wanted to see King Kong fight Godzilla. Right, and it, it, it was awesome, and he destroyed him by the way. Yeah. Oh gosh, Godzilla destroyed King Kong. With King the of business. the monsters, right? He bows to no one. Oh, yes, yes he does. He does. <laughs> Spoilers again. Um, <laughs> can we talk about how badly he trashed King Kong? Because even, even though King Kong had that weapon. They gave him the anti-Godzilla weapon, <laughs> which absorbs the laser breath, and he still got just demolished by Godzilla. Well, it's because Godzilla has laser breath. Godzilla, is God- Kong does not Godzilla was not messing around. Like every other Godzilla movie, mm-hmm. it's like he's very much a bare knuckles brawler. He goes in and he punches people. And then the big build up is he gets beat up and then he pulls out the laser breath and then that's how he beats the monster. Right off the bat, was not messing around. Just is destroying Tokyo <laughs> with like the constant like... He's never not lasering no, something. No, no, no. That was Hong school. Kong. Hong Kong. Because we would go, we have to make every movie now marketable to the Chinese. Uh, yeah. So that was Hong Kong. But right off the bat, just constantly, he shoots a he shoots a beam all the way to the center of the planet. You know, on the hollow to, Earth. The whole oh. hollow Earth thing was out of nowhere. I love that. No, no, that's actually that was like, fun, and I love the scene with him going through it and all the, the mm-hmm. floating rocks. That was yeah. gorgeous. It's, it's like a journey to the center of the earth. But that's actually a callback. They hinted at that in the last Godzilla movie to where there's the scientists named this theory about how Godzilla keeps showing up so quickly. Like he comes out of the ocean. It's because of these like inner tunnels that tunnel through the earth. and they call it, But it's, it's a lot of fun. It's like this big conspiracy theory. I mean, just, just throw in some Nazis and you've got uh, a yeah. sky too. You know? <laughs> that's uh, a lot of fun. 
Though, and Gary Busey, the movie, I mean, you have to have Gary Busey in that. Gary, yeah. Yeah, oh my gosh. But the movie's a lot of fun. I'd recommend seeing it, but, I mean, all the human stuff is just ridiculous. It's, oh, it's fun. oh, I worked here. This place was destroyed. And I'm going to take these two kids into the ruins of this building, and there are no guards protecting this place. It's pretty bad. Yeah. But Kong versus Godzilla is... Oh, how did I give it two thumbs up? What about, what about the Stranger Things girl? Uh-huh. I am in a city as big as freaking Hong Kong. Yes. And I'm going to bump into my dad, oh, course, who yeah. happens to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like, oh, dad, there you are. That's the fairy tale. And they hug, and it's nice. Yeah, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> but I, I'm glad they gave so much time to... The fighting and to Godzilla in Hong Kong, but yeah, another King Kong. King Kong. There's a lot more uh, action in this one, to where you know other movies, it's like you're just waiting for Godzilla to show up. This one, it, it actually feels well paced with like the, and and also they kind of fixed like the humans because you have to have like some sort of subplot and humans to just tie everything together. They took it a lot less seriously. They don't. They know you don't care right. about them, so it's just kind of cool. Well, the movie, the movie's fun. taking. The monsters seriously, yeah, and it's taking the humans non-seriously, yeah. which is probably that's the only, only way to make it work. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it works great. It, it's almost a good bad movie, but it's better than that. It's fantastic. It's better than bad <laughs> movie. It's it's high budget bad. Oh, um, it's fun disaster movie. porn all the way. Just that's I love how, it. That's how I feel about like the new Wonder Woman movie. It's it's. It's full of plot holes. Wonder Woman 1984? Yeah. It's full of plot holes, and it's goofy, and it's cheesy, and I loved every minute of it because it reminds me of, like, those old, uh, the, the early 2000s goofy Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire, mm. to where they're just fun and goofy and very comic book-like live-action movies. This movie really just bombed horribly. Which one? 1984, Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, did it not make a lot of money? No. Yeah, it, a lot of people didn't like it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It reminded me of like Spider-Man 1 and it, 2 and it, Tobey Maguire. I haven't seen it. It's goofy. I like it. But I, I know enough about it that it has serious problems. It um, does have problems. The, uh, from the, the, plot two, holes. the plot holes, from the two intros to bringing back the dead guy to yeah. she's having sex with somebody who does not have control over his body is because he's currently being uh, indwelt by the guy she loves. Doesn't and make any isn't sense. Isn't that rape? Or... <laughs> there, there are problems in this movie. I really like the villain, though. <laughs> it was really good. Okay, okay, okay. Are you really talking really about... Um... Not the cat lady villain. The oh, okay, villain. okay. You're talking about the uh, white man bad villain? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um... The, the, no, we got a problem like, after Trump. <laughs> no, 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 he's, he's ethnic or something. I, I forget the name of the actor. He's really great. Wait, wait, wait. It's I, very much megalomaniac, though. Like well, yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah, capital, you know, like Trump or... I thought Trump he was or. really, he's really well played. I like this character. Yeah. I thought he was yeah. a villain. I haven't seen the movie. I've only seen a million reviews, though. He's not, like, an action villain, which is why they had to do the, uh, Kristen Wiig, uh, yeah. playing the... Kristen Wiig, yeah. Saber tooth villain or whatever the the, the monster lady because Wonder Woman needed someone that she could fight and like you know be in a brawl with you you can't do that with the Trump villain because he's not uh, a yeah but everything I've read about it and seen about it is if you just strip Kristen Wiig out of the movie it I would be like a much it, better movie it would be a better movie. <laughs> honestly yeah it doesn't even need the yeah. I'd agree with that. Well, it's kind of like Spider-Man 3. There's way too many villains in it, you know? I don't think you've there's got, too much. Got, like, I just Hob thought Goblin, you've hers got, is really bad. <laughs> yeah, you've got Hobgoblin, you've got Venom, you've got Sandman, and mm -hmm. the whole Venom thing just didn't need to be there. That, you know, and mm -hmm. the Hobgoblin slash, you know, eh, okay, set him up for the next movie, but it should have just been Sandman. I thought the main thing is it should have been Sam. I think um, the the people blame the the the, the badness, like uh, <laughs> the failure of the third Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie, on the fact that there are too many villains and it was oversaturated with the amount of villains. I don't know if I agree with that 
Uh, Do you think it's the emo dance scene? <laughs> that, that was terrible. <laughs> no, I think you can have a movie with a lot of villains in it and a lot of characters, and you can, you know, have all those characters have their moment if, you know, those characters have already been established. Because you look at the, the Avengers movies, that has a ton of characters in it. Me. And, and you have... Um, Things like Thor 2, they're multiple villains, and they all have their, you know, their different roles. It's, it's, I don't think there are too many villains. I just think um, it was a bad movie with bad writing. It be bad done dancing. right. It's, it's a very delicate balance where right, you have right. to pace things um, right. And what was... Uh, it's not that it had too many villains, it's just that they did it very poorly. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, what was that movie, uh, Somebody vs. the World? Scott Pilgrim? Yeah, Scott Pilgrim versus So the many villains. Seven yeah. built, but they did it right. Exactly. Um, but, okay, Avengers uh, Infinity War. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen Endgame. I like the way Infinity right. War did. One. That's great. I just, yeah. I, that was awesome. I like that. Let the bad guy win every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Just go with that. Um, but Infinity War was a new method of making movies and integrating a crap ton of characters. And, ooh, pardon me, and a new way of, of storytelling, a new way of editing that's gonna be taught in film schools for decades. I couldn't agree more. I've been yeah. saying that it's, it's something that's never been done before, a crossover, you know, it's just- Of that it's, magnitude. It's its own genre of movie. It's, it takes an entire series of movies, takes the characters of all of them, and just puts them in. Right, we were talking about ensemble cast yeah. earlier. There's, I mean, there's just no way to totally make unique. that. Uh, there's no way to make that more expansive. There's no way to make that plot any bigger. It's just fantastic, and it was so well done. And you have other companies trying to. Uh, take advantage or, or, or recreate that success that Marvel has had in the mm-hmm. MCU with DC and DC's sucking at it so bad with the Justice League movie. <laughs> you had, um, gosh, who was, I think it was Sony who tried to do the, the fantasy expanded universe with, um, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh, uh, oh, God. What the mummy. The um, mummy. The, right, right. The dark universe. They're trying to... And the Dracula. They, they had Dracula and the well, mummy. Well, the problem... And but, they failed so bad. It was terrible. But they're trying to take advantage of the success that Marvel had with their MC. But, they're trying to recreate that formula. But you know why? They suck. No, 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 <laughs> the movies no, are no, terrible. No, no, but you know why Marvel did well and these other guys did not? They, they rushed the introduction of the characters for one. Correct, correct. They, They're trying to build this giant ass universe mm-hmm. um, without giving proper attention and due to the characters with their own films. You, you, ha- you have to establish people it's, and you need, to, you need to make us care about the characters, not just, oh, good, there's... Quicksilver, or oh it's, good, there's this guy. Yeah. It's it's almost as if they don't have confidence in their own product to where we couldn't make a whole movie about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That wouldn't be successful, so we're just going to cram him into this mummy movie so we can introduce him as a character rather than... They don't have Correct. confidence in their own product to where we can make a movie for each character and then... And then, then they're trying to rush the end game right, and right, product, right. which... And then even Spider-Man, when he was owned by Sony, they tried to do that with the, <laughs> the the League of Evil, where they try to the Amazing Spider-Man tried to set up a Spider-Man universe with, um, gosh, they made the first um, Andrew Garfield movie with the Lizard Man, and then they made the second one with um, Electrode or something. And at the end of that, they're setting up teasers to like the, the, I think it's called the League of Evil, Mm -hmm. where they're trying to set up their own Spider-Man universe with like multiple overarching bad guys with like, they're teasing. It it didn't work out, obviously. (laughs) But but every company's trying to make their own universe now. I I have no problems with after credit teasers, which is what they did in the Marvel stuff. I like after credit teasers. Give me an after credit teaser where um, Samuel L. Jackson shows up and goes, Hey, I'd like to talk to you. Mm-hmm. You know, great. But you don't have to integrate James all that Bond's into the main return. movie. Yeah. You know, yeah. You don't have to to go. Oh, and a lot of the movies now 
like the Mission Impossible stuff. Mm-hmm. You don't even they don't even feel like their own their own movie. It just feels like uh, they're setting up the next movie. Uh, John Wick, the last John Wick one was the same thing. I've never liked John Wick. Okay, I like John Wick. Very popular. I never liked I really like John Wick, but the, the last movie felt like all it was was setting up the next movie. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing for like the Mission Impossibles. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, okay, we're just setting up the next movie. We're, it's, we're making money now, but we also want to get you excited for our next opportunity to make more money. I mean, I, but, but it doesn't... Give us more money. <laughs> but I want a completion. You and want it, it, a I, standalone I, I, film, right? Or, and I want something. I want to feel uh, catharsis at the end. I yeah. want it to feel as if uh, I've come to the end of the story. I can close the book if I want to. Um, unfortunately, all it feels like is a chapter, and just waiting for the next chapter. And I'm you, like, you miss when movies were self-contained. They didn't need to set up a sequel with a cliffhanger. Just a, a self-contained story, to where, um, yeah. Where they had confidence in the fact that you can invest in this one movie. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, if a movie is designed to be a trilogy, like Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. boom. Or, um... But even the Lord of the Rings, they were self-contained films to where they had a concrete ending. And it's not really like this giant cliff. It, it, the story felt like, you, you know, it was a solid end to that chapter, at least. Correct. You watch that movie and enjoy that movie correct. by itself and not feel like... Oh well, now I'm just waiting two years for the next right. Movie. Right. The the problem is is the the trying to build this universe. You're not allowing each thing to stand on its own. It's like I want to see. I, I understand when I go to a movie mm-hmm. that I may eventually be looking at a giant ass group photo of all these people. Yeah. But when I'm at that movie right now, mm-hmm. I just want to see that person yes and later on after i'm invested in the 12 people or whatever Mm -hmm. then i want to see the group photo but i don't want you to start throwing people in here here, you know higgledy piggledy trying to make it all Mm because it just ends up being one big horrible mess um, like league of extraordinary gentlemen you know (laughs) so we're going to take all these concerns and we're going to fix everything wrong with the movie industry (laughs) and this new movie which is (laughs) <laughs> You're gonna make your own movie, and we're gonna fix oh, no, all. Oh, we're gonna make a bad movie though. But we're gonna fix all the stereotypes. No, no, we're probably gonna play. Into <laughs> we're gonna play into all the stereotypes. stereotypes. Ooh, we can do that Doctor Horror continuation yeah. <laughs> with with, uh, with uh, milk. Milf. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yes, I'm excited. <laughs> Coming to probably not a theater near you. But. All right, cool. Well, we'll see. Anything about Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've already talked about Jamie. Um, we like Jamie. Love Jamie. Jamie's great. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into this episode about Jamie, <laughs> hey, but mostly hey, Godzilla no, movies. <laughs> uh, we're bad at this, you know. <laughs> we're so good at this. <laughs> no, no. All right. Cool. Um, there's the Fury from the Deep. Right. I don't have a picture of Godzilla, but. All right. <laughs> See you next time, guys. <laughs> Hey, we actually have outro music now. Yeah, we do. I don't even have to sing it anymore. Yeah. Click here for the next episode. Or, or Click here, here to subscribe. So this is or the subscribe button. And then this here. is like the next episode, <laughs> previous episode, subscribe. Boom. Right, bye. Bye. <laughs>